Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete. So thanks for watching my video guys. If you're new here, my name's Mike Day. I own a concrete company and we pour a lot of concrete flat work and that's what my channel's about. Today's kind of special in, in the regards that not only are we pouring a garage floor here in the video, the, the garage is about 40 by 28, but I also got the guy who inspired me to go into business on my own and that, that's the guy right there to the left of me in the blue shirt. Now his name is Rick Gallo. Now Rick, Rick's a great guy, number one. But he used to own Gallo Foundations. So he did concrete foundations just like the one you see here, this garage. He did houses, he did all kinds of stuff. And he did that for years and years and years. Now I met Rick when I was about 16 or 17 years old. So about 40 years ago, I'm 56 now. And the way I met Rick was I was, I was working for a commercial company pouring commercial floors big big floors 10,000 15,000 square feet and what Rick you know when Rick was doing his foundations he needs somebody to come in and do his floors like this so he would call my boss that guy his name was Brett and we would do Rick's floors like this on the weekends so kind of like as a side hustle Brett and I would go do Rick Gallo's floors and that's how I met Rick, you know, back when I was really, really young. So to make a long story short, you know, after about three or four years, Rick and I became really good friends. And he kind of just kept nudging me in the direction of starting my own business. You know, I, I knew how to do the work. I knew how to do the floors. And Rick started at a really young age. So, you know, at, at about the age of 18, 19 years old, Rick was about 10 or 11 years older than me, so he was about 28, 29. He just kept inspiring me to go on my own and giving me the confidence to do it. And that's that's how I basically started my own business is, you know, Rick would, Rick probably did 100 foundations a year like this. And he said, hey, Mike, I'll give you all my floors. So that was, that gave me a boost of confidence in, in the regards that I'd have some work. And then, you know, I just went out and found some other contractors along the way as the years went on. And uh, that's basically how I, I got started right there. Rick was a big inspiration. He was also a really good friend. So I, you know, I have a lot of thanks to go to him, Rick Gallo and, and Gallo Foundations back in the day. And that's, you know, I, it, without him, I don't know. I don't know if I would have had the confidence or someone to push me into going on my own, but it, uh, I might have. But he definitely pushed it for me and, and got me going probably earlier than I, I would have done it. So, and that's for you guys out there wondering, you know, should you go on your own? You're not sure, you're on the fence. I mean, what's it gonna take for you to get off the fence to go on your own? Let me know down in the comments. Obviously, obviously you wanna have the work, but you you get the work, you know. It, that's up to you. If, if you need the work, you'll go out and find it because you'll have the desire, the burning the desire to be successful. And you'll go out and you'll find the work. Somehow you'll make it happen. And, that's, and I did that too. There's, there's never going to be a right or wrong time. It's just, there's always, you just got to make it happen. You can't wait for the perfect time. Even if you just stop by doing things on the side, like on the weekends, and then finally, you know, you those weekends start getting busy, busy, busy. Every single weekend you're pouring, and then now you got too much to do on the weekends. So you gotta, you gotta maybe find time during the week. Eventually, it grows like that if you do really good work and your name starts getting out there, and then, then you just gotta make the decision on, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop working for this guy and I'm gonna start my own thing. And that's how basically all us guys did it at some point. We did. We just didn't jump into it not knowing what we're doing. Um, so it's just, you know, Rick was a big inspiration for me. He had been doing foundations for, you know, I don't know, 10 years before before I jumped on my own. So he, uh, and I would, I, would, I would do the same for you. I would tell you that if you've been doing this work and you've got an idea of how to do it, maybe you're doing a few jobs on the side, I, you know, when's your time? There's, there's no time like the present. So, anyway, we're, we're pumping this garage floor because we had pumped the house earlier. You know, we, we did the house and the garage. I didn't put the house on this video. I'll put it on another video. But So, we're doing both floors at the same time, and we really needed the pump for the house. 
we could have tailgated the garage but since he was already there pump was in the way <laughs> we couldn't really back concrete trucks up to it because the pump was sitting in the way we just decided to dangle pump the garage and you can see how we got that poured now what I'm doing the concrete setting up pretty good it's still in the shade but I'm tapering the, the front doors and this is how we taper them we like the concrete to, to set up quite a bit before we start tapering them so we can get a good sharp taper in it and then we'll just shape them the way we want to shape them right there like I'm doing now we pour we pour floors like this just about every day I mean five days a week sometimes six days a week from usually from April until the end of November or into December depending on when it gets too cold here we live in Maine so there's a good eight or nine months where we're pouring concrete every single day this is what we do and then there's a few months you know from from mid to late December into March it's usually pretty cold here to pour outside we still do there's still days where we can pick and choose as long as they cover the ground and the ground doesn't freeze and then we've got blankets that we put on the concrete after we we still do pour outside but it's pretty cold and then if we have inside jobs we can pour we, we do that and then over the years you know we've learned to do other things that relate to concrete like repair work uh, overlays we do a lot of overlays decorative overlays we do a lot of epoxy so there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that we can do inside in the winter time that keeps us pretty busy year round. I'm actually using <laughs> I'm actually using the third my 30 inch trial. I got three of these. I got about eight or ten power trials total, but I got three of these little ones that that way we use. And I'm using this little one today on the garage just because number one it's in the shade and it's the garage really isn't all that big. So I figured the little trial would work just fine. That's Darren out back there. He's helping me do my edges. We're mag floating our edges now. We like getting our edges nice and flat and filled in. And this is just part of the finishing process. All good finishers do their edges. So this is the first pass over this. I'm going to show you how I you know finish this here and then at the end I'm going to show you how we we saw cut it too we put quite a few saw cuts in this just to help control the cracks You know, I would say when it comes to finishing concrete with a power trial, um, there's, there's a lot of factors that go into this, but two of probably the most important factors are, number one, your experience level. How long have you been doing this? How good are you at it? And then the timing, you know, when to get on it, how fast you need to move over it. 
and that's a lot has a lot to do with experience and then some other things are you know the size of it how fast do you need depending on how how, how big the floor is really and then the weather conditions like this one here we got sun we got shade how warm out is it that's all going to factor into you know the finishing process of this like this this edge over here in the sun I might need to hit that twice before I go over to the other side in the shade and hit that it's just it all depends it all dries differently or cures differently um, so when when you're finishing concrete like that load right up there that was the end load from the house floor we did so we had three or four yards up there and that was finishing much faster than the rest of this garage floor so I had to really stay on top of that piece versus the rest of this and that's just what kind of where experience comes in and you only get that by doing it over and over again but it helps to have somebody that knows what they're doing teaching you how to do it so I mean if you guys if any of you guys want to learn this and learn it from me you can you can check out my private training down in the description below to see if that's something for you I do have some training videos on power trialing in there and uh, anyway it just comes down from getting behind the power trial learning learning how to maneuver the power trial learning when to when to hit the concrete when not to hit it is also very important and then sometimes you just when when to get off it and let it let it cure up a little bit more before you hit it again there's a such thing as over hitting it too so they all factor into it You can see that little trial. That little trial is pretty neat for a floor like this. And I mean, you got to be on your ball game. You got to you got to know how fast you need to hit it. But here's 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 me doing my edges now. Most of the floor is almost done at this point. I'm shining out my edges, making sure my edges are nice and neat and clean. And then I'm gonna buzz this floor one more time. You can see it kind of glassing out there. That's done. And then we'll get the saw in this right here. So we saw cut all our floors and slabs and any you know just about anything flat we do unless we hand join it if it's like a patio or a sidewalk or something but the sawing that goes down about an inch and a quarter inch and a half when you're on a brand new blade that just helps keep the shrinkage cracks from forming in the slab so it helps control the cracking we tend to put them quite a few of them in if, if we can like on a garage like this off those corners of the garage doors and obviously down the middle the the length of the garage and just break it up into smaller squares and we typically don't have any trouble with any cracks forming in the in the concrete this works really really good that's a what well, it used to be a soft cut saw uh, Husqvarna bought them so now they call it a Husqvarna soft cut saw it's just an early entry saw that uses a diamond blade the skid plate really helps keep it from uh, the concrete from raveling on the on the edge, so it get, does give you a nice sharp sawed edge even when the concrete's this green. As soon as we pull the power trials off, we're sawing, and this thing really speeds up the process. 
That way, you know, we're done. Now we don't have to come back to this job. We'll move on to another job tomorrow. Same thing. Then move on to another one the next day. So we get multiple jobs in per week doing doing things this way. But anyway, guys, that's how we pour garage floor. That's how I got into business for myself. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit subscribe. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one.